after eight years of casting, you learn all the things that can go wrong, and you try to avoid them. You try. Sometimes you fail. All right, we have no restarts right now. So, BRB. Everything sounded normal. I heard all the buildings building. I assume they were all normal buildings building. Now you can do the intros. In the bottom right, as the red Protoss, he is Zaun. Oh, are these guys teammates? That's funny. In the top left, as the blue Protoss, it is Estrella. These guys are teammates. Alpha X. Though, that used to mean something a long, long time ago in a faraway place called Brood War Pro League. It used to mean something to be clanmates, to be teammates. It really doesn't in StarCraft 2. <laughs> Generally, you're just your friends with people, and that's who you make custom lobbies with. Does it increase the chances of being friends if you're on the same team? Maybe. But, yeah, I'm doubting that they've actually played a lot in customs. I could be wrong. They've probably played each other on ladder, but under barcodes, which are now easier than ever to, you know, unravel the mystery of who a barcode is, but still. Only if you bother. And PvP is just, it's a weird beast, man. So even if they have played each other, that just adds into mind games that are too mind gamey to really think about the mind games. I already went over this in our last PvP, I shan't again. Just know that it gets weird. So Estrella either knows PvP or knows Zaun um, or both. He is definitely checking around. This is actually something that trapped it against parting, which is so funny, funny, funny. They scouted with their probes, except they never scouted the actual base. Now, this didn't end up biting the trap in the butt too often, but I think it did once, where parting did just put, like, technology in his main and was like, you never scout it here. <laughs> Which, you know, is the most obvious place, but... Yeah, this actually works out really well for Estrella, who does find the pylon of a researching building. This is absolutely excellent. This is just a pylon not doing anything. It's a little bothersome, but so be it. But it is researching resident glaives, and now it is not researching resident glaives. So go ahead and cancel that. It'll be canceled when it dies, but why just hold up 150-150 in a, in a building is my question. Apparently, he's not going to cancel it. Uh, pylon is put down. Chill battery, rather, is put down. Stalkers are on their way out. Stalkers, again, as I said in the last PvP, an excellent solution in a game where you're not quite sure what your opponent is doing. They tackle adepts. They chase uh, units around. They defend well. They attack well. They take out proxy pylons well. I mean, all that good stuff, right? And the robo behind it is a very safe follow-up as well, if you're really just like, I have literally no idea what he's doing. And this was put down, I think, as he basically found this little portion of technology. But it's also going to provide him an accessible attack path with that war prism. If he was really dedicating to this, and he was just coincidental that he also found the proxy, he'd have a third gateway. But either or, whatever, this is a very effective way to try and punish Zaun, who is trying to get to a Nexus, trying to just make this the weirdest game ever to make up for the earlier folly by going for a Stargate and Proxy, but it's really not going to work. I think Disruptors would be a maybe better choice, because you realize you're going to be contained. He certainly did. Shield Batteries are on the way. He did, uh, did cancel that Nexus. Third Shield Battery even on the way. Australia going to show off his moves. Captain Falcon right now. Show me your moves. Which is weird that he would say that, like, it's it's Captain Falcon's taunt. 
So why would he sell the guy he just kicked into the air off the stage? Show me your moves. Is Captain Falcon actually just like a gigantic asshole? Oh, oh my god. I think he is. Anyways, keeping it contained, keeping eyes on what Zaun is doing, yet not knowing about the Stargate. Disruptors are a very common thing that you see from people trying to break out of a contain, but maybe I didn't give this proxy Stargate enough credit. Or maybe I just gave it enough credit, I'm not sure. Show battery's in the main already, and providing that Astrea doesn't just constantly warp in offensively, which he, I don't think he would, because he realizes he's not breaking the front. He'll just warp in two stalkers and like not take any damage. Even if there wasn't a shield battery, he'd take like, I don't know. How many probes of the damage? Zaun is hiding his Stargate, though. Which obviously adds the potential damage given even five seconds of uh, time on the mineral line. We'll see how we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what comes from that. We'll, we'll, okay, 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 okay. Observer from Australia got into the main base, saw Twilight Council and nothing else, and was probably really suspicious about that. Like, is that really the only thing you can afford? So I think he's on guard against something weirder. He also saw that there's no robo, so he doesn't have to worry about that observer being sniped. He's just gonna see everything. His warp prism did not evacuate with that recall. It is here providing adept harassment. Oracles do come into the natural though and get almost the exact same amount. Double Oracle is gonna take on a shield battery if paired up correctly. A little bit of a misfire there and there. Kind of evens up. Oh, loses an Oracle. They do die very quick to Stalkers ever since their type of... What do you call it? I mean, it's it's tagged armored or light or whatever. What is it? Unit tag? Ever since its unit tag was changed. There's the right sentence I was looking for. <laughs> uh, I sound Bosony. That's not where I'm from. Why do people even bother guessing American accents is beyond me. Unless I'm talking like this, y'all. Like, why even bother guessing? I just don't get it. They get a donation. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, forget about it. Vegan Year 2020s donates $12. Be vegan to save our planet. I don't really like that type of maneuver, even if it literally says, be happy, be free. I'm like, what are you telling me? What tell me to do with my life? What are you telling me to do? But much like be happy, be free, I actually agree with the sentiment. Vegan is a great way to try and improve the world and life quality. But anyways, thank you for the donation. This defense is going to be handled with a single immortal and war prism. Third base, sorry, that's a natural. That's a, that's a not natural natural. It's going to go down, really didn't have a chance. And the actual natural natural down also doesn't really have a chance. Down's still trying to really mix things up here. I mean, I, I applaud the effort. You know, those double oracles get in there and kill 16 probes, and suddenly we got a game brewing, even though the army supply would still be in favor of Estrella. But it didn't kill that many. And he has equal probes and not equal mining until literally just now. This is a whole cluster, you know what, of force fields. I don't even know what happened right here. But the eventually go in favor of Zaun, who has Blink available, so was not completely cut off from the rest of his, his sentries. But the sentries were fighting an awful long time by themselves, and now left abandoned by the Stalkers. Blinking to the right side. They didn't even get that last shot on the Immortal, which is going to be picked up and saved. Third Immortal comes forward. Blink forward to tackle the low Immortal, but that's not really the problem, my dude. There's three more Immortals anyways. Probes are pulled as the Oracle comes into the natural, and it's, uh, you know, potentially evening, but not really. Not actually. There's still so much army left over that Estrella does easy peasy clean that one up. GG. Estrella not falling to Zound's tricks today. Getting beat so bad, you still have to see them. Yeah, so he's actually just an asshole. Definitely Texas. I mean, it's any part of the South. I always love, like, especially like people from Texas are like, no, that's that's definitely a a Dallas accent. And you're like, okay, <laughs> compared to what? Well, them dare folk down in Lubbock, Texas sound way different. You're like, oh, okay, if you say so. 
I'm not actually Texan. You guys are terrible at guessing. My face win manner has a better southern accent than ZG. Proceeds to not actually put a face. I love when people do that. My face win. I have no idea what face you're making. So that was my laziest attempt at a southern accent. My throat doesn't actually feel like I should be trying to, to strain it, so. American also includes Canada. You know how often that really holds up in the court of public opinion? Fucking never. Right? Like, you know how words change and adapt and there's like the definition and there's also the connotation? You know what I mean? Yeah, American is one of those words. When you say American, you better believe that everyone is talking about the USA. Unless you're trying to get by on some technicality. Or making up for a mistake. thought you were American. I'm Canadian, but it is America, so, like, you know, it's North America, so I'm American. Like... God. Anyways, on top left on Nightshade. It's down. In the bottom right, as the blue Protoss, he is Australia. Not Californian either. You guys are terrible. It's pointless to guess where an American accent comes from. It's pointless. My accent is the general American accent. And that can be found basically anywhere as accents seem to be growing smaller and smaller nowadays. As social media and McDonaldization takes over the world. The American media infiltrates our brains. There will no longer be accents. There will only be the general American accents. <laughs> well, that's Estrella going for a proxy pylon. Very common spot on Nightshade, too. But the tricky thing is, yeah, exactly what he's trying to do is when you go for the low ground. Now, that probe, if it sees that probe do that, it's got to know there's a pylon up there because that probe ain't doing that just for hanging around around the floral bushes. It's not going to be like, wow, they smell amazing. No, it's doing something. So you can put a gateway on the low ground and really pile on the pressure. You can put a robe on the low, low ground and then a gateway and actually do like the supreme cheese. Perhaps that's what Australia was doing. Perhaps that's what he still will do. I mean, Zalan scouted the pylon. And Australia should know he scouted the pylon. But now it's Australia not scouting for Zalan's pylons. And Zalan is going to use this pylon. And we're just talking pylons on pylons on pylons. Taylor, I'm an honorary Canadian. Canadian? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm an honorary Australian, thank you very much. And I'd rather be Australian. They're all really cool down there. And they have the best accents. Who cares about a Canadian accent, eh? Like, who wants that? That's just another, like, syllable I have to put on the end of my sentences. No one wants that. Well, that goes astoundingly in favor of Australia. That stalker's basically dead. That's not a great sign. That is a gateway on the way for Zaun, but not in the low ground. Didn't do the tricky one. Robo on the way for Astraea is putting him in an excellent position as he also safeguarded himself against the Stargate since he got very limited scouting on Zaun's side of the map. It's a smart thing to do. It is technically a waste of 100 minerals, but in this game where he's going pretty well against the stalkers of his opponent and should also have the key ingredient, a Robo, against a three gateway stalker, uh, sorry, three gateway pressure. I think Australia still comes out ahead despite a uh, somewhat meaningless shield battery. <laughs> exactly, everyone's American and haven't been liberated yet. Ugh, so many follow ups I could say to that. Oh, this is actually getting a little bit awkward, though. Estrella does have a key ingredient in defending against a three gate. He has the ability to make an immortal, but he didn't make an immortal. He made more stalkers out of his two gateways, not three, and he made a warp prism and an observer. So this just got real weird. He's trying to make an immortal now and a sentry to try and just maybe 
force field away or maybe in? Okay, I see his plan here. Oh, well, he ended up force fielding in. Is that the right call, though? Very similar soccer counts. Probes are going to have to be pulled to ensure that Estrella ends up winning this fight, and he certainly will. Soccer actually surrounded right there. Good mineral walk. Whoa, man. Whoa. These Protoss have seriously got to chill on the cool micro. Like, calm the F down, you guys. Are, like, this was like you already combed your hair and you took your hair comb out again just to sli like, slide, like, slick it back, you know? Like, just stop it. You don't need to do that. That was pretty slick, though. Uh, I more so am applauding the mentality, the peace of mind, the appropriate response he had of thinking of warping in a sentry with the recall to trap his opponent in with him. To have that as your immediate reaction, I think, is the most commendable thing there. Because while micro was flipping cool, and having presence of mind to do that specific micro was flipping cool, I actually think having the presence of mind to do the sentry recall thing was even cooler. I think a lot of people panic and immediately warp in stalkers, which are useless. They just get overwhelmed. So I, uh, I'm super impressed. Now, Zaun, I mean, I sh I'm, you know, shouldn't be complimenting Estrella too much here. Zaun did something that was, it made a lot of sense. It was supposed to work. It would have probably gone in his favor had it been just a straight up base trade thing, because he had shield batteries building and shield battery in his main, actually. And just the ability to warp in more with three gateways, but it didn't work. And now he's going to be down a Nexus if he's not careful. He's also going to be down Stalkers if he's not careful. Even misfiring in his own gateway. Or maybe that was Estrella. I'm not sure. Point is, he didn't get the Warp Prism. Is that Estrella scouts the Warp Prism and gets a couple of Stalkers? I mean, Zaun. He's got some cool moves, but Estrella's uh, been a lot cooler. Everyone is a linguist in chat. I just don't know where the, like, it seems very recent that people have tried guessing where my accent is from. And maybe it's a meme. You know, by talking about it, I'm making it actually happen. But it seems like a very recent thing that not only does chat want to be full of Twitch chat GMs, they also want to be full of Twitch chat GM linguists. And that's, I don't know why that happened. Australia, there's literally no Zerg in this tournament, so Australia will not be playing his PVZ, which is a very fun PVZ. I will say, I'm with you on that one. I really like Australia's PVZ. His PVT is where he still has to be tested a lot, and still needs to work on. And not just in the whole concept of like, well, they're Korean Terrans. Of course they're intimidating. I think he's also just generally weak in that matchup. Blink versus Blink coming up here. Australia, yeah, we're going in for another Warp Prism because it's died and I wasn't paying attention because I'm the world's best observer. It was definitely not reading chat. Makes sense. Going into Robotics Bay. I think Sound should do the same thing. They're kind of at this point where it's no longer ludicrous. It's not ludicrous, not no longer. It's just generally not ludicrous to go into Disruptors. Like, we could have a Blink Stalker Disruptor versus Blink Stalker Disruptor game. One person could decide upon seeing the robotic spade to go like, nope, just kidding, I'm gonna go Stargate and then get ahead of you. But no one's really scouted each other thoroughly yet. They're trying with some say, Phoenix, which this one is gonna see it. Yep, sees it. And they're trying with War Prisms as well, but that's the first time that they actually got full confirmation on the robotic spade. For Estrella, his Lucid Phoenix was right up in there. My bad, he actually got full scouting too. And he sees no robotics bay. It could be hidden. It could be, but it's not. It actually, was just put down in the natural. Did he see that? He did not see that. So it is disruptor versus disruptor. Wow, man. I just I love the PVPs today. We get so many types. We get aggressive ones, passive ones. Three five minutes. One. Oh my god. Oh. Duh, blah, blah, blah. We get PVPs from 2015. We get PVPs from 2017. Where is Neeb? Come on back, man. It's Blink Soccer Disruptor. You can own the Korean scene all over again when you're Kespa Cup. It's here. It's now. Is it, though? Oh. 
Is he faking? Is he... What's going on here? What's happening? Is that real? It's real. <gasps> Stray is like, you're going Disruptor? No, he hasn't seen Disruptors. No. He's saying, you saw me going Disruptor? What if I go Colossus? Now, that's a very funny question to ask. Because I feel like the answer is, well, Colossus are stupid and dumb in PvP. And you should feel bad for making them. But... I'll never say that for actually, for real real, about a pro. Because there's reasons to what they do. And I have seen a couple of Colossus builds actually work, so I'm not a total hater. But honestly, that seems like a really weird choice. He might just be doing this because he expects Zound to counter with a double Stargate. Which would be, yeah, less effective against Colossus. Even though they also get hit by Phoenix. Uh, still be less effective. But that's a... It's kind of a bold thing to assume. It's not the worst thing to assume. It's a very common response. But it's a bold thing to assume. I feel like Double Disruptor is going to be better than Single Colossus right now. We'll see how it unfolds. Australia with a huge upgrade lead, by the way. An entire upgrade ahead would win these Stalker Wars. Making sure to keep track of that War Prism while also trying to pay attention to chat. He does have one Disruptor, my bad. But still, it went to Colossus afterwards. Disruptor, 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 That's gonna see his opponent's Disruptor. Maybe it sticks around long enough. Good little shot there. No, instant recall. So still doesn't know? Uh, he's gonna figure it out, right? He doesn't see any Stargates. He doesn't see any Phoenix. They would have responded to the War Prism. So he does set up a Disruptor now. He went for two Colossus, but didn't go for Extended Thermal Lance. I don't know if that's really worthwhile adding into your army. I know people have kind of like hypothesized and theory crafted about adding Colossus in just to kind of tackle an ever-growing number of charge lots. But even against charge lots, if they were here, which they're not, were around, like, it's kind of... They, the Conkey's either too good, or the Zealots collapse in on the army too fast for the Colossus to really do what they want to do. Ooh! That was close. So I, I don't even know about that. I don't even know. I don't even know. A couple of Zealots going to the third base. Totally undefended from Zound, but he does have reinforcements. He's going to go for the attack, feeling very confident here. There could have been a Disruptor on that high ground, for all he knows, and there is now. And also one coming in from the War Prism from behind. This could be really nasty if Zound is not paying attention. His Disruptors are all on a ball right now, going for attacks on the Astra Astraea's army. Three Immortals get popped, along with the Colossus, but do live behind. It looks like he grabbed the Disruptor, but oh my good god. Did that one Disruptor from behind just kill all the Disruptors? It might... It... Uh, 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 I don't know, I don't know. It's, does it matter? Well, okay, so Zaun is not winning. He is winning the fight. He is winning the fight. But he did just get all of his probes killed. He's tackling some of the probes of Astraea too, though. So it's a very weird fight. I definitely want to go back in that replay because I missed a huge pop off of Disruptors. And we are in a very micro-oriented section of the game once more. Astraea up in army supply, slightly up in workers. Both of them still have three bases. One Disruptor barely lives. Goes for the Warp Prism. Gets it. A couple of Zealots. Wait, they were attacking their own soccer? Was that what happened there? More probes are going down in the natural, and that's actually going to be it, actually. Like, that, that... Ten more probes going down in the natural is probably it. That is too much of a worker disadvantage to come back from when you're also an army disadvantage, and also at an army, an upgrade disadvantage. Australia will, in fact, take the 2-0, but I'm going to go back into that, that, I need to, I need to. Twitch Prime Sabbath received. Thank you for appeasing the overmind. I just, I was just completely blind. Okay, hold on. Here, yeah, I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. Pay attention to the disruptors. Pay attention. So he grabs that one. This is when I saw the one from behind. Disruptors are all clumped up. This is what I was hyping. What happens to them? Okay, two go down. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I saw what happened that time. All right, all right, all right, all right. So two went down to a disruptor shot, but then the rest just ran into the army because they weren't protected. That makes so much more sense. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you, Mr. Picard. I see for the two-month resub.